All right. Um, so what I'm going to do now is go over uh, Amazon. And again, um, you know, th th this is the type of stuff you kind of like do in the morning or end of the day. Just look for some bases. Um, and uh, yesterday you saw a base in Amazon forming. Uh, you really, you really can't rely on the base. It means nothing until the breakout. That's when it starts becoming meaningful. And what you saw on Amazon was basically a base, and that base led to a breakout. How you know this is legitimate? Is because it has good volume and good range. Breakout on range, widespread bars, big range, and pretty good volume. So this is your jump over the creek. And this here is your uh, what do they call it? Pull back the creek. T to C or something like that. Alright. Now, how do you know that it's going to go here? You really don't know. It could have pulled back and tested all the way back here. You know, you really don't know. How do you know to buy exactly at that point? You know that it's it has potential to test the top which is the breakout um, resistance, but it has potential to go test lower as well. H how do you become precise in doing this? I really don't know, but I will say that typically these um, pullbacks, they are in the middle of thrusts. So somewhere within this bar, which is the thrust, that's where the testing, because that's where the really strong volume came in, and that's where the CM will defend. Typically, it's within the thrust that they pull back to, and that you know that's where the huge orders came in to, to cause the jump, and that's where traders are lined up, ready to buy pullbacks. So you got the jump over the creek, the pullback to creek, one, two, three, almost all the time. You got this one, two, three correction after a wave up, and then a retest. Retest of the um, creek, uh, jump over the creek. Now let's take a look at something a little bit more interesting. Is the point and figure chart. The way this thing was basing out, that to me, that is pretty important. All right, that is pretty uh, pretty important. And I think that, um, sorry about all that. Anyway, as you can see, what happened is you had this, this uh, thrust, then you have this pullback. And, you know, the only way you can really get in is to get in uh, within the, um, with the consolidation within the base, you know, whoever got in with options, they did pretty well. Um, there are some things that are quite striking about this and, you know, some things to look at. The first is that it's a downtrend. So your first evidence of this, let me see if I can make this bigger. First evidence of buying is right here. After that is a pullback, and then what's really critical to note is that it actually trades higher. See that? That's that's pretty important. It goes up and then it doesn't you know, you don't have a selling wave that takes out the low. Instead, what you have a one, two, and a three, a third wave up. 
that takes out the high. That is really important. The pullback after that, it's on heavy volume. I'm sure it's on heavy volume in the bar chart. And the key to remember is that when that happened, you had you really didn't have any follow through. But on the bull side, you did. You have one pullback, shallow pullback, and then it trades higher. Demand, lack of supply, demand. After that, this big down move, this big down wave. You know, it it doesn't really do much. It it just tests. Okay. It just tests, and then you consolidate sideways and break out and all that. But the key key thing to remember is that it went up, down, and traded higher. Okay. Now, where is the creek on this point figure chart on Amazon? The creek is the the it's typically the high before the low. So from a point of figure perspective, it's right here. Okay. It's right there. Other than that, there's one more important takeaway from charts like these. You know, head and shoulders occur in many ways. Yeah, shoulder, shoulder, head, or whatever. We don't really look at a head and shoulders, but it, it's it's very true that a lot of times the left hand side gets tested on the right hand side meaning whatever is on the left hand side in terms of support after the breakout will be tested on the right hand side in other systems they call the symmetry in Wyckoff I mean they use names like uh, preliminary support whatever that means but um it's just a phenomenon that I see occur a lot, um, especially after a climax. So typically, you know, in the buying climaxes or selling climaxes, where you have a lot of buying or selling, there's a then there's a break, um, and then there's a retest, and the retest goes is almost symmetrical, and later on the coin did you know uh, head and shoulders where the shoulders are aligned. And then when when there when there's a, a head and something else between those two shoulders, you know they call it uh, complex head and shoulders. But the point really is that you have that symmetry right here, okay? It it, it does happen. It happens a lot. Okay. The second thing to notice is that in a downtrend. You know, when these point and figure charts, they, they create formations that look very bullish. You know, like a bull flag or a bull coil or a bull, bull whatever. What you have here is like that, the, the pole part of the flag. And then everything else is just like uh, inside, inside after the up, down, up. You know, the one, two, three. Everything else is just inside and brewing. Right, that it's just getting ready for the breakout. Okay, in here, those who, who get options, I think they'll they'll do pretty well. But um, you have to be really careful. You have to watch the market to see, you know, if there's accumulation in the uh, market or the other stocks, as well as the price volume action here. But I think the best tip off is is this: it's up, down, up. Took out this high, this high, this high, this high. So it took out a number of highs and traded higher. Anyway, that's all. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye.